Dr. Sean Anderson, my first paycheck as a resident doctor. Sean's a great guy, stand-up dude. He's the kind of guy that comes to my house, uses my guest bathroom, and does a number two, but doesn't flush twice. So it's our last week of surgery. And we love DePaul too, of course. Good morning, vlog. It's Monday, and this is my last week of surgery. Good morning. Spin. Last week in the OR scrubs. I'm kind of gonna miss them. He's definitely gonna miss them. I don't know if he said this publicly on YouTube, but he came over last week when he was wreaking havoc on my, on my uh, guest bathroom. And he mentioned that he actually enjoys surgery more than he enjoys medicine. He's like, dude, I wish that I could just keep doing surgery, but I gotta go to my IM rotation now in the month of August. And, and yeah, because surgery is hashtag mo better. I had a little birthday party yesterday. I had some childhood friends there. I had some friends from medical school who are at different programs here in the city. See, I thought Sean and I were friends, but I got no invite to this birthday party. Gotta start the morning off right. You could start with a rock star or you start your morning off with some tea because tea is mo better. That's White Tip Oolong from Tea Bloom. You can go to their website, use Jabal10 for 10% off for both their teas and their tea wear. Good morning. Good morning. You excited to not be on call this week? I, I, dude, I'm excited to, I'm excited to feel like what, what, the, what the other side, what the other side is. You want, you, you could do so, you. Why are you manifesting it, bro? I have a record good week on call as evident from my vlog two weeks ago. So hopefully, I have a little bit more excitement this week. We'll see. Famous last words. See if there's any surgeries first and foremost before we do anything. Yeah. I'm kind of hoping for a chill morning of surgery. Oh, not a bad list this morning. Seven patients. Nice. Let's see the many cases. It looks like we have one surgery at 7 a.m. We have a hernia repair and that's it. Not bad. Dude. Not bad. Not bad for a Monday, man. That's not typical for surgery. That's some easy living. Enjoy it. The boys are back. The boys are back in jail. One last ride on surgery. This is gonna be a good week. It is gonna be a good week. The fall's my favorite. I think it's kind of ironic that we're going to miss this so much because we were dreading starting. Yeah, we were so nervous about starting surgery, and both of us wish that we started on medicine. And now we're kind of dreading going to medicine next week. <laughs> it's just funny how you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. You shouldn't How the turntables? It. Yeah, exactly. The tables did turn. The turntables surgery, again, is just, there's a reason everyone loves surgery. Except for those who don't love surgery, but they're just wrong about surgery. And one of the comments I got in this week's vlog is, why do you guys round so early? Do you not wake up the patients? And the answer is yes, we do. It is unfortunate. I do think that we do round too early and we're waking up patients that we tell you should get good rest. And in medicine, we understand the importance of sleep and for recovery. And sometimes when you wake people up, some of them will have trouble falling back asleep. Yet we do it because we got to do our surgeries at seven to 7.30 start time. And uh, it's funny, right? All right, we are done with cases today. Yep. We just had the one open hernia repair, which debugs scrubbed in for. We got some grub per usual. And now I'm on ED call, so I'm gonna eat, hang out, and see if any consults come in. I'm going home. You're going home. Step three. The good news is that it's the easiest of all step exams. So there's step one, two, and three. One is between second and third year of med school. Two is between third and fourth year of med school. And three is during your intern year at some point. He's starting very early. A lot of people, like I did mine, I took mine in maybe like December of my intern year, and you only need like literally two weeks to study. Depending on your specialty, it may or may not be important to have a good step three score. Now for plastics, not important. So I was like, cool. So my co-residents and I, we were all just focused on getting as close as possible to the passing score without overshooting it, because if you overshoot it, that's wasted effort studying. And I got my score back and it was a lot higher than it needed to be. And I had maybe done only a third of the Ural Q bank. Part of it was, okay, cool, good score, but it's also wasted effort because for my specialty and for my fellowship and such, not really meaningful at all. And then I quit plastic surgery anyway, so. All right, so it's about 1.30 in the afternoon. It's been a slow morning, but I finally just got a console. Not sure what it is yet. I need to do some chart review. I just know they're in the emergency room, so let's go check it out. All right, not too shabby. I saw one patient with a partial small bowel obstruction, another one with 
diverticulitis. Got the plans going, got the notes in. Exciting call day. I told myself I wasn't going to have more caffeine, but I need a pick me up. I'm telling you, bro, tea. You're not gonna have those crashes then. And oolongs, I mean, as you guys know, oolongs, I think, are the tastiest. So, I am leaving the hospital right now. It's a little after six. I had a pretty chill day of call. We had just a couple consults from the emergency room. No one that had to go to the OR. But we'll follow up with them again tomorrow. I'm really exhausted right now. I am definitely gonna have to force myself to go to the gym because right now I kind of just want to go home and lay in bed but I really want to keep up the good habits. So we're just gonna push through and keep up the workout grind. I had a rule for myself when I was in my third year, fourth year and intern year, which was that if I could ask myself the question of should I work out today or not, the answer was always by default yes, because to be able to ask myself that question meant that, that I had the time. I may just not have felt like going, I may be too tired or whatever. But those days where you don't even ask yourself because you're getting home at 1 a.m. and you need to start at 4 a.m. the next day, those days obviously I'm not gonna work out. So. That rule, I think, did serve me well because there, there have been some studies showing that even if you are sleep deprived, exercising while you're sleep deprived is better than just being sleep deprived alone, which was surprising to me because I would have thought that getting a little bit more sleep would have been more beneficial than exercising. But based on that study, it seems like that's not necessarily the case. I have no idea how Vegas hits record high heats and then it just starts raining. Oh, that's nasty when it's all humid. Okay, okay. His dogs are so adorable. Stop that rock star, man. She's no better. This morning, like four o'clock, thinking I only slept for like a couple hours. Like, I don't understand. I tried tonight to get a good night's sleep, I think. Yeah, yeah. All right, it's time for rounds. We're meeting out, we're attending at 5.30, which is early. So today we have three hernia repairs and a loop ileostomy takedown. So yep. nothing crazy, but it should be a fun day. Yep. For those who are wondering, you may be thinking, why is there so much abdominal and gastrointestinal stuff? It's because general surgery is mostly focused in those areas and the other areas of the body that are requiring surgical intervention are normally the job of subspecialists. All right, so we are done with the ileostomy reversal. We also had a colonoscopy to do. And now we have three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back hernia repairs of various kinds of hernias. I caught up on my notes finally, so I'm gonna run and grab a quick snack before the next case starts. As I say, eat when you can, sleep when you can, and don't fuck with the pancreas. I love both this so much. And Oreos, delicious. The hope is that we're done with cases before the cafeteria closes. Sometimes that's not the case. We'll see what happens today. It's nice when hospitals will allow the residents access to the physician lounge. Some hospitals do, some hospitals don't, which is weird because you are a resident physician and you definitely earned access to those foods and snacks. But the wild thing is when the mid-levels come through and say, hey, we want access to the physician lounge, but we don't want the residents to have access. And it's like, bruh. So I'm leaving the hospital right now. Today was a pretty good day. We had four surgeries and a colonoscopy. I did make a couple of mistakes today, so after we finished rounding, I scrubbed in for our first case. And because of that, I kind of just had enough time to put orders in for our patients that we rounded on this morning, but didn't have enough time to finish their notes. So after the first case, I kind of rushed to get the notes done between the first and the second case. And because of that, there were a couple mistakes I made in the assessment and plan. It wasn't a big deal, but I basically just left some information in there that was unnecessary because it was from like the previous day's plan. So it wasn't consistent with what we were actually doing for the patient and like the things that we were ordering. My attending pointed it out to me and he was really nice about it, but it was still a good lesson that it's better to just take my time and make sure that my documentation is accurate because we're consult service, you know, the primary teams are relying on our notes and our consultations for these patients. It's also just poor form, you know what I mean? To not have the most up-to-date accurate information in the notes and then be signing them because again, I'm rushing and trying to get them done so that I can get into the next surgery. Anyway, that was my lesson of the day. So kudos to Sean on this. First of all, admitting when you're at fault, that's the, the way that you improve. If you don't admit that and you try to, and your ego is like, no, no, I'm making, let me make some excuses here. You're not gonna learn. Number two, most attendings are gonna be 
pretty pissed when that happens. What, what's happening is he's copying forward the note. So you take yesterday's note, you copy it to today, and then you don't go through it thoroughly to catch the things that are no longer relevant. Like, hey, let's order an MRI or CT or whatever today. And you do that again the next day after the imaging was already done or ordered. Um, that doesn't look good, right? That note now has some substantial inaccuracies. But the thing is, because Sean is a likable guy, because he is friendly, he's hardworking, he takes responsibility and ownership when he fucks up, his superiors, this attending, reacted not too terribly when he made this mistake. He's like, hey, you know, like, this is a mistake, don't do it again, learn from this. And he's taking the right attitude. So if more people took that kind of approach, they'd be a lot better off. That was my lesson of the day. The whole point of this YouTube channel is not just to share my success, but to also share the lessons I learned, the mistakes I make. So hopefully you guys don't make the same mistakes I do. Anyway, I'm really tired right now, but I'm still gonna go to the gym and get a workout in. I'm still on call, oh, yeah. so. I can't believe this is my last week waking up at four in the morning. Next week I start medicine, so I have to be here by 7 a.m., which isn't really much better. In a way, it is kind of nice being at the hospital before most other people get here. You get whatever parking spot you want. You can kind of play music while you're chart reviewing because no one's here. I don't know. I feel like I might miss it. But then I think about yesterday and how tired I was and maybe I won't miss it. A lot of people are surprised that going for their surgery rotation, getting there at like 4, 430 isn't as bad as they expect for a few reasons. Number one, the first couple days suck as you're adjusting to that earlier wake up time. But after a few days, your circadian rhythm shifts and then hopefully you're sleeping a bit earlier. And I remember on like orthopedic surgery, I was waking up at 3, 3.30, which is initially rough, but again, it gets easier with time. Driving to the hospital, I like the empty roads. As, as you guys know who watch my car channel, I do like to enjoy myself when I'm on the roads as well. And sometimes you get there earlier than you need to. Maybe you finish your pre-rounding or your rounding and then you just have like half an hour or an hour of quiet time. Most people, again, are just arriving to the hospital or it's still empty, and then you have time to do other things. And before it's even breakfast time, you've already accomplished so much in your day and handled all your emails and done a little bit of studying and it's just a good feeling. I gotta go get some new scrubs before I chat review. Fresh scrubs, baby. What so we have a very short list this morning and we have no cases, which is pretty nice. Let's go around, baby. Let's go around, buddy. DePaul, your scrub top's inside out. Reminds me of that one time I had to teach them how to roll up sleeves for uh, dress shirts. No cases. No cases for patients. My friends, you're gonna go home really early today. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. All balance is out, buddy. How do you keep getting so lucky? Lucky? My hands look like they did last week, so that, <laughs> so that they can look like this this week. Yeah, we've had such an interesting couple of weeks where DePaul gets a really hard call, but then he gets a really easy week after, week after, and I've just kind of consistently had a chill call week and a chill week off, like, call. There's this idea of white cloud, black cloud. So if you're a white cloud, that means when you're on call, nothing really happens, things are easy. You're not getting called in. Black cloud is the opposite, Shit in the fan. DePaul is more of the black cloud. Sean is more of the white cloud. Back when I was in training, I was definitely more of a black cloud. Now we are gonna go do some notes and then get some brekkie and just, that's it. Yeah, good day, no case. It's a really good day. I love the contrast on this rotation where some days we're working hard and some days we... Some days we're working hard. Yeah. Some days we're not. Exactly. <laughs> I don't want to minimize what we're doing. I mean, we still like, saw patients and you know did stuff and made sure that yeah, we, everything was okay we've been at work for three hours like, yeah we've, we've been working i think it's just the the pace of the day can vary between days all right so like i said earlier it's been a really chill day we only have five patients on our list we had a much longer list earlier this week but a lot of our patients have been getting discharged which is awesome no cases today we actually only have two days of er call this week compared to five days the last few weeks. So today, for example, we're not on ER call, we're just on floor call. So I'll remain available basically all day if something happens with one of our current patients or one of our previous patients comes in through the ED, but otherwise, not a whole lot for me to do today. Anyway, I'll catch up with you guys later if something exciting happens. We gotta stop drinking this stuff, man. Telling you, man, oolong. 
Thank you later. So DePaul and I are officially separated next week for medicine. We're on two different teams. Yep. Which is sad. We thought there was a chance we'd be on the same team. Nah, but they can't put two transitional year residents on the same team. Yeah. The duo is too strong. They knew medicine couldn't handle us, but we'll still see each other. Okay, done pre-rounding. We have a pretty chill list this morning. All patients that were known to us because we haven't been on call the last couple of days. Mornings like this are really nice when you already know everything about the patients and you can kind of take your time during rounds a little bit. I don't know if I've ever explained this part of rounding, but we essentially meet up here in one of these uh, physician dictation rooms and DePaul and I will like start working on notes. Our attending will meet us in here and we'll kind of table around a little bit, kind of update our attending on our patients. And then all three of us will go and see all the patients again and update them on the plans. And yeah, that's been the daily routine for almost a month now. And I'm gonna kind of miss this. Or maybe I'm just gonna miss being on a rotation with Deboogie. That's probably what it actually is. Yeah, but they were really lucky to be on a rotation together because generally speaking, you're not gonna have two interns, TYs on any service together, and being able to do that with your friends is rare. It is uh, the first two years of med school, you're with your classmates most of the time, that's part of the good vibes. Third and fourth year, you're generally not with your friends, you're just randomly assigned to different rotations, and sometimes it's with a friend, sometimes it's not. And then in residency, it's kind of the same. Depending on how large the residency program is, also that changes things as well because uh, some specialties are smaller and there are fewer interns or residents per class and then even less likely that you'll be seeing that person in any rotation because they'll be on a completely different service than you most of the time. But happy they had that month. It looked like a lot of fun. All right, we're done with cases for the morning. DePaul had to scrub in for both because I had to go see a new consult. It was a gallbladder. So we'll either operate on that today, later, or tomorrow, we'll see. But now we are gonna go get some snackies and wait for didactics. I just ran back to the ER to let a patient know that we are going to do surgery tomorrow for their gallbladder. That's why I love surgery, honestly. It's so nice to see a patient, have a plan, and then tomorrow we're gonna execute it. You see a problem, you figure out how to fix the problem, you fix the problem, everyone's satisfied. I'm telling you guys, surgery's dope. Anyway, right now we're gonna go get some fresh scrubs and then we'll go see our patients. I only realized this after that in medical training, I was able to fall asleep pretty quickly because I was constantly sleep deprived, right? As many people are. And there would be stretches where I just felt like crap. But then that one day where I got seven hours or more of sleep, it would be like, oh my God, this is what life is supposed to feel like. And things were like, I could see clear and I could think clear and you know, the birds are chirping and the, and the sky is bright. I very much think a lot of people could get more sleep by optimizing their time better because most of us waste insane amounts of time every single day. That would give us more time for sleep. But even if you're doing everything right, there are certain days where you just can't get enough sleep. And given what we know about sleep and its importance for not only health, but also performance, cognitive and physical performance, it's wild that we're sleep depriving many medical professionals, whether they're doing surgery or other procedures or even just cognitively demanding tasks of being a physician. Last day, baby. Last day. How are you feeling knowing it's your last day of surgery? I'm kind of bummed knowing that. Yeah. <laughs> knowing that even though like, you know, we were, we we're kind of like, anxious and hesitant about starting surgery. Yeah. But medicine is just like clearly worse. Like yeah, we can do it like 4, 4.30. But if you're not on call, you're out like like in the morning, you have the rest of your day. Yeah. Like, medicine, you're kind of like changing your desk for 12 hours a day, six days a week. So. Yeah, we're dreading it. But you know what? We're dreading surgery too. So maybe, maybe it'll turn out to be nah. next to yeah. <laughs> Their experience of surgery is not the norm. Just keep that in mind. They had a really chill, Surgery rotation, for sure. Dude, isn't it also funny how essentially every hospital or almost every hospital serves complete junk to both the patients and the providers? That's another thing that's uncommon. Being able to eat with other people is also very uncommon because most of the time it's gonna be short bits here and there because you're just running around having to do all this different work that you should eat whenever you get a chance and normally you get something quick, you scarf it down and then you run back and it's not really a social thing, you're not really eating with other people. Occasionally, you'll do it with one or two other co-residents, but that's not the norm. But for now, I do wanna share with you guys the fact that we actually finally got our first paychecks in residency. We got Getting them last paid. Night. Direct deposit, first like paycheck direct deposit. After so many years of medical school, and finally getting that first paycheck, it's gonna be a lot less than you expect though. In like four 
years. The last time I had a consistent income was before medical school. And that part of medical school definitely sucks, right? Like not making consistent money. And now I just got my first residency paycheck, which is really cool. So let's talk about it because I'm actually really open with things like money and finances. I think people should talk about it because it's important whether it's to compare yourself with others or to get an idea of what someone makes if you're thinking about going into that profession. Like if you're pre-med and you're watching this, you should know what residency salaries look like, right? So like you guys know, I am a transitional year resident in Las Vegas and my salary is $60,700. Now, of course, there's like taxes and stuff. So what my paycheck was last night was actually $1,954.94. This is my first full paycheck. Technically, we did get paid two weeks ago, but it was basically half a paycheck because we started July 1st. So we only got like the last week of that pay period, if that makes sense. So that's kind of why I didn't share it until now because it wasn't a full paycheck. This is our actual full paycheck and is what I can expect to be getting every two weeks. So 2K every two weeks, you're gonna be making a little bit more than 4K per month because it's a little bit more than four weeks in a month. And we'll talk about that. Is that enough or is it not? So that's 144 hours per paycheck, right? So if I were to divide this by 144 per hour, I am making about $13 and 57 cents an hour. But that's after taxes. So your pre-tax amount, because whenever people are talking about salaries, they don't talk about their post-tax uh, hourly rate. They talk about the pre-tax hourly rate. So it's pretty low. And when you get to the more demanding uh, residencies, things like neurosurgery is, is the worst, then you actually are running the risk of making less than minimum wage. Because if you're working I don't know the exact, the exact number, I'd have to calculate it, but because um, wages for residency are going up every year, so the number of hours needed to be below minimum wage has to be higher too, right? Because it's just numerator, denominator, numerator being your, the amount you make, the salary, and denominator being the number of hours you work. And to get that number smaller, less than minimum wage, you need a higher number of hours worked. So um, I think we should be having an intelligent and open and honest discussion about this. What you'll sometimes see in the comments or on Reddit or wherever is people say that, oh yeah, you know, residents all make less than minimum wage. It's like, well, if you use shit arguments to try to prove your point, no one's gonna take you seriously because they're like, uh, no, that's not true, right? So he's not making minimum wage 72 hours per week. Assuming he's doing 72 hours per week every single week, which it sounds like on internal medicine, he probably will be, right? But other rotations are gonna be, be variable. Um, so again, I'm like, I'm all for residents making more money, but if we're gonna argue these things, let's do so with integrity and honestly and intelligently so that people can't just poke holes in the argument and be like, dude, what the f are you talking about? Topic of discussion with resident pay is that when you break it down into hourly, it's not a lot of money. And I don't know how you guys feel about this. I'm very passionate about the fact that I think residents should be making at least what PAs make as their, you know, Intro, intro salary, their base salary, I think residents should be making that much. We're spending a lot of hours in the hospital, we're doing everything, we're going on many rotations, we bring the hospital a lot of money. I know it's part of our training and our education, but I think it's generally well thought and accepted that residents are underpaid and I think everyone knows it, which is why a lot of programs unionize, like the program I'm going to next year is part of a union, and we'll talk more about that when I move there and I'll tell you guys how much I make there and all that kind of stuff. Unionization for residents is mostly a good thing. We actually cover the pros and cons in greater detail in this video right up here and also linked in the description. Now, let's talk about both sides of this argument. Residents need to make more money versus residents make enough. The argument for residents needing to make more money is when you see the number of hours they're putting in every single week and their salary, because you're getting paid a salary, same amount no matter how many hours you work, they're making a very, very low hourly rate. The other side says, well, they're still in training. They're not attending physicians. They're not board certified. They're not on their own. They're still requiring some resources, right? To keep training them. And they're gonna be making a lot more money in the future. So the reason why the system is the way it is right now, and the reason why residents make only 60K per year is because they know people are gonna put up with that. They know that first of all, you're kind of trapped. Once you graduate medical school, you have to do residency if you wanna become an attending physician and you're kind of stuck with whatever salary you get. Secondly, they know people are 
generally going to put up with it because in three to seven years, depending on what specialty you're in and how long that residency is, after that, you're going to be making at least 220 to 250 on the lower end to high six figures on the higher end. So it allows them to justify that because people are going to be willing to put up with it. Now, one of the reasons that's not okay is that first of all, residents are working really long hours in residency. 50 to 60 hours for the easier specialties, 70, 80, sometimes even 90 for the much harder specialties. Again, neurosurgery is like the worst offender, but other surgical specialties are also closer to the 80 and non-surgical would be on the lower end. He's going to anesthesiology. So after he finishes his intern year, hopefully it's gonna be like 50 to 60 hours per week, right? Still definitely more than 40. When you compare that to mid-levels, PAs and NPs, who are starting, who had just finished their training, who are starting, they make way more. Yet the residents are providing pretty much just as much value. And the hospitals actually get subsidies from the government for the resident salary. There's also a couple other things like I've talked about in other videos where we get all of our food paid for at the hospital. Like we get about $4,000 a year in food credit, which is really nice, um, which is like money I would have been spending on things like meals and groceries outside of work anyway, right? And like you guys know, I'm living at home this year. In fact, one of the reasons I chose to do a TY in Las Vegas was so I can stay at home, live at home, save up as much of my first year salary as possible before I move to San Diego next year because San Diego is really expensive. So for my situation, this is overall really good. Like I'm gonna basically save a lot of it and I'm very into finances. I was before medical school. You know, I have a Roth, I have investment accounts, I have a high yield savings account. I just opened up a new travel credit card. Very into finance. I'm very open about finance too. So we can always talk about it on the vlog. I, I will never shy away from him. So just because Sean is very open about the stuff, I'll, I'll share some, some more here. He and I had a discussion last week or maybe two weeks ago and um, it's actually a really good discussion about like retirement accounts. He was asking, hey, should I even contribute to retirement accounts based on how much I'm making and my costs in San Diego and whatever? And uh, long story short, yeah. And we covered the IRA, the individual retirement account versus the 401k, the one through his employer. And uh, the pros and cons of each and a traditional versus a Roth contribution, pre-tax, post-tax, all that stuff, because this is really important. And a lot of people, myself included, get into finances once they start having a paycheck because you want to optimize that and, and work towards your uh, desired lifestyle, right? Now, a few things to keep in mind here. Sean, I'm pretty sure doesn't have any student loans, which makes this so much more manageable, right? So, so, so much more manageable. Also, San Diego, you get paid a little bit more. I think it's like 70K starting. And then you also get a uh, housing stipend as well. So those things combined, again, thank you, resident unions there. And some of these hospitals will also pay for food when you're at the hospital. It makes it a lot more manageable when you don't have other larger expenses, such as supporting a family, paying off your student loans, paying for a car payment, yada, yada, yada. So in those situations, you're able to make ends meet and you're not struggling too much because 70 to 80K, right? 80K when you count the housing stipend and such, that's good money. In Vegas, 60K, you're able to survive. Not, You're not struggling to make ends meet, but it's not paying you a commensurate wage with the value you're providing society based on the struggle, the effort, the risk, all those things that you're taking on. But who I really feel for are those people who have a lot in student loans. I was fortunate, but I also kind of created my own luck by working my fucking ass off, as you guys can see in these other videos and, and learn how to do this yourself. I, I earned a merit-based scholarship, so I had a very sl a small amount of student loan burden by the time I was starting residency, something like 30K-ish, right? And everyone has different life situations, so many people have little to no student loan burden. But when you have 250K, and you have a partner and kids, and you have to move to a new city, and you can't rely on your family because your family doesn't have financial resources, now you're kind of fucked. Because with residency, you don't get as much choices as to where you move. So based on the match, yeah, you may have to move far away and that just the moving costs alone can be very expensive and that city may or may not be more expensive than what you're used to. And it's already a very stressful thing to begin residency and then adding that on top, that financial strain for those who are struggling to make ends meet based on their uh, circumstances, that's tough. And of course there are certain programs that can help ameliorate that. Things like income-based loan repayments where you normally would have to pay 700, 800, a thousand dollars per month for your loans, but based on your income, uh, it's an income-based 
uh, repayment plan, so your minimum payment amount is actually reduced so that it's more affordable, but then you're still ballooning with interest. So by the time you graduate residency, it's now ballooned to an even larger amount. But again, these are conversations we can have in a future video. I was actually suggesting to Sean and to Paul, we sit on the couch, just talk finances, hash these things through because many people are in that situation and they don't know, hey, should I contribute to retirement? How should I optimize? What can I splurge on? What should I save on? Let me know if you would like that video with a comment down below and then we'll decide whether or not we proceed. It does feel really good to finally be getting paid, to finally be able to start putting money away, investing, retirement, just having money to spend without dipping into savings like I have been for the last four years. Like it's nice that the stressor of money is now decreased and I can focus more on being a good physician. We're by ourselves today since DePaul is off for his golden weekend. It's not too bad, I'm pretty familiar with all the patients. Golden weekend is when you have two days off which is a normal fucking weekend for most people in any other job, but in medicine we call it a golden weekend. It's a special treat to get two days off. Today was my last day of surgery. I kind of just went in, rounded on our patients, wrote the notes, and now I'm done. I am done with my first rotation of residency. It's been a really good month, as you guys have seen from these vlogs. Like, I got so lucky to not only like be on my first rotation with one of my best friends, but also to have just like really good attendings um, that were just really fun to work with and get to just do fun stuff. Like surgery was such an awesome rotation to start off with. That's awesome he started out with that. There's gonna be a lot of ups and downs to residency. Rotations you enjoy, rotations you hate, and everything in between. This is just the beginning though, because next I'll be on medicine, which is just going to be a totally different rotation, different hours, different responsibilities. And then I'll start a new rotation after that. And again, after that, and after that, and eventually I'll be moving to San Diego before I know it. Great stuff, Sean. If you guys want more Sean Anderson and DePaul and me, we actually collaborated on this incredibly comprehensive research course called the Ultimate Pre-Med and Medical Student Research Course. And it's available at medicalinsiders.com forward slash research course. Use the coupon code SEANREACTION for 20% off. Much love my friends and I'll see you in the next one.